Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch. The following video is a live video that I've edited making this project here. This is the front side of the box. This is the back side. Um, I hope you enjoy the video and if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Thanks a lot. So tonight we're making a Christmas version of this uh, box. This was my project for week nine of the 12 weeks of Halloween. Um, isn't that so stinking cute? I love it. But we are making a Christmas version. It's going to be a very sim simple version. Uh, this one took quite a while to, to make. Okay, so we're using crumb cake cardstock and whisper white cardstock. I'm going to make a plug for the new trimmer. Um, it's not available to customers yet. It is available for demonstrators. Uh, and it does cut and score wonderfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the cutting and give you the measurements. So the box that we're making is box template number 12, and we're gonna cut this to measure three and five eighths by nine and a half. So the three and five eighths is the big mark after the three and a half. And I'm just gonna cut. See that sliced really well. Okay, then I'm gonna open up the arm and I wanna cut it to measure nine and a half. So that's over here, nine and a half. Okay, that's for the box. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move the cutting blade away and we're gonna use the scoring blade and I'm gonna score it on the landscape side at one inch. And I actually like to use the one inch over here because I have more control. So I'm gonna use the one inch over here. So there's that one. Then I'm gonna flip it around and score it at four and a half. And then five and a half. I wanna open up that arm, but I can go ahead and do the five and a half and then open it. And then nine. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it on the portrait side, which is the three and five eight side, and I'm gonna score it at one inch. Let's see, is that straight? Yeah. Okay, now we're done with the scoring. And when I did my blog post this morning, I forgot to include the template um, that you can print. So I, I posted a picture of box template number 12, but I didn't post the PDF for you to print. So I will make that correction tomorrow and then I'll post it with this, with this project as well. Okay, so we don't need that. We're gonna take this and fold it on the score line. Okay. <laughs> okay one more there we go I'm going to take the scissors and cut this little section off right here and then snip these at an angle and then over here I'm just going to cut up to the score line so the box part of this, well, this whole project is really super simple. So the Halloween version wasn't. I, well, it was simple, but it just it just took more time to to do. Okay, so I'm going to take the take your pick tool and remove the backing of the tear and tape, and um, I'm going to show y'all something really quick. So some of you guys know that I created. I'm the creator of the chick stand. <laughs> That's not really the right word. Um, but I've always used it for the paper piercer um, and then the take your pick tool. But look, um, this is a cookie scribe tool. So if you decorate cookies, um, the, the uh, chick stand will hold it. 
also. So for the cake decorators, I have a new market to, to sell those to. <laughs> okay, so this is the back of the box. So this is going to be the front bottom, and I'm going to put my tear and tape on there. I just had to say that because um, I had someone this weekend tell me that, and I was like so thankful. I'm like, yes, because I have thousands of these things. Um, so yes, it will hold your, it holds needles and pins and all kinds of pokey tools. Okay, so here's our box. Not much different, again, same inside box, but we're going to use this little house. Let's see, where's my white cardstock? Oh, here it is. I got so excited about the uh, the chick stand that I've like lost my train of thought. Okay, memento ink. We're gonna stamp this house two times. Okay, you wanna make sure that you get ink in the center too. And you wanna use your stamping mat um, when you're stamping photopolymer. I have a mat underneath my desk, so that's why you don't see it in the, uh, in the camera. I love this image. Now you don't have, to, I'm not gonna decorate this with both of these tonight. I'm only gonna color one, but I'll cut out both of them to show you how this is gonna work. And then we're gonna stamp the tree over here. And then we'll stamp another one over here. We have lots of coloring to do tonight. So I'm using, let's see, light and dark crumb cake. So that would be the combo. Uh, we're gonna decide about the light and dark granny apple green. I used granny apple green earlier today, but I'm kind of thinking I wanna see what the light looks like. Hopefully I worded that right. I might've said the wrong thing. Um, dark daffodil delight and dark real red. So if you guys need like a little break, if you need to run upstairs or grab a soda or something, this is going to take a little while to color. Um, and I could have maybe done some of it off camera, but I didn't have time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to color the candy um, with dark real red. What are these, like little peppermints? And I'm going to go slow so that I don't mess up. I want one to look really good. Okay. Then over here. If I could sing right now, or if I was really good at telling jokes, I would I would tell a joke since I got so much coloring to do, but let's see, what kind of story can I tell y'all? I don't know. Now I'm gonna do the, the candy cane. Oh, Brooke and the birds are coming home next weekend. It's fall break um, for her school. So um, Brookie and Elvis and Gizmo will be here. Yay! I can't wait to see them. Okay, so now there's that part. Um, we'll come back to the dark real red, but we're going to go with the dark crumb cake now. So I'm just going to color some of this dark. And you can skip this if you want to. You don't have to. It's just kind of my way of doing that fancy coloring that everybody does. Well, not everybody, but some people. And I'm just gonna go around the edge. And same thing on the door. Just gonna go around the edge of it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the gingerbread man. Mmm, I like a gingerbread man. I haven't had one of those cookies in a long time. 
if you go to the right place, they can be really good. I'm not, I'm not much of a store-bought a, a cookie. I don't like store-bought cookies. I'm like a snob. Okay, so this is the light crumb cake. I'm like, what is that noise upstairs? David's um, sealing some meat. He's freezing some meat. So he's using that thing that sucks all the air out. I can't remember what that's called. Okay. Now that part's done. And then now I'm going to color this part. Maybe I should have colored it in advance. I bet I still finish on time tonight, though. I don't usually go over, not much over 30 minutes. Um, the Snow Accents Puff Paint, we're not using it tonight. Um, but while I'm coloring, I will let you know that that is another item that's on low inventory right now so if it's something that you've been thinking about ordering but you've been on the fence or haven't been ready it is on low inventory okay i said when i was filming the video on um on the halloween box i said this is going to have to go to a special person because it takes so much longer to make it i would say the same thing about this one too but if someone gave me this this uh, project, I would jump up and down with excitement. I got something on the tip of my pen. pen. Okay, we're almost done with the crumb cake. Okay, no, nope, we're not done. I'm also coloring the inside of the window. You could color those with um, a yellow or a blue if you wanted, but I don't want to. Now I'm gonna take the dark again and I'm gonna color the stones. I guess those are called stones, pebbles. Um, now, I'm going to try the Granny Apple Green. Like I said, I used uh, the dark one on the project I made earlier today. But I want to see how the light looks. Because you guys know that I usually prefer the light of most of our blends. We'll compare the two. Yeah. I'm wondering now if I have the right color. It doesn't look so light. No, it's the light. I snuck a peek. Okay, there's that. Mm, what else am I coloring? Oh, the candy. And one over here. Now we want to take the red again, and we're going to color the little berries or ornaments, I guess berries. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe it's boring y'all watching me color, but... That dude that used to color on TV all the time. People watched him. <laughs> um, okay, so now the candy. And the candy over here. Do y'all remember when you used to make these houses with the kids? Ours always turned out disastrous. I'm just saying. I'm just telling the truth. Um, okay, so what else? I think that's it on that one. Now we're gonna color the tree. So same thing, I'm gonna use 
And I've got to color both trees because technically you need four of these trees, but we're only doing two tonight. Otherwise, we'd be here all night. I should have colored them off, off camera. That way we could have completed it. Sorry about that. David's upstairs cooking us a steak. I'm so excited. Okay, let's see. We're gonna take the real red and we're just gonna color I went out of the lines on that one. Oh well. It's not the end of the world. Then the dark crumb cake. And then the dark daffodil delight. Now we gotta repeat that process over here on this one. <laughs> Okay, now let's get the dies. So we're going to cut the gingerbread house out with that one, the trees out with that one. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and stamp the greeting. So the greeting's going to be from the To Every Season stamp set. I will be using this more in the future. I know I've only used it like twice. Uh, but in my defense, the holiday catalog did just start, what, like September 5th or... I can't remember one of those days fourth or fifth I think it was the fifth okay so and that's going to get cut out with the ornate frame die okay let's get the big shot we'll start with the gingerbread house and hopefully I'm gonna line this up There's that one. Look how cute that is. Then I'm going to cut out this tree. And then I'm going to cut out the greeting. Again, this is the Ornate Frames die. Ooh. Ah. It likes to jump around. I know, I know I could use washi tape and that would fix it. I really don't want to though. Okay, we have one more tree to cut out. Where is he? Right here. Oh, wrong die. What am I doing? Okay. Okay, let's get everything back over here. I'm not gonna cut out this second one. I'll just show you uh, my sample when we're done so that that way you can see. So now we're gonna take crumb cake ink with a sponge and we're going to sponge the edges of our box. Somebody's dog is barking outside, and it's not mine. Okay, there's that. Now we're going to get some um, liquid glue, and we're going to add it down here. So that's gonna go, just center it right there on the box and hold it to, for it to dry. 
And then we're going to take some dimensionals for the trees. We're going to pop this one up here. Oh, I cut this one a little crooked. And then add that one over there. We're going to take three of the red rhinestones. Um, let's see, not that one. <laughs> this one. And I'm going to add it to the gingerbread man. His buttons. So there's the first one, and the second one, Rut row, come here, and the third, and I lined them up good too. Oh, someone was asking the other day how to keep their chick stand clean. Use the same hole when you're using the take your pick tool. Yeah, because it's nice and big, so you don't have to keep making new holes for that. It's easy to find. Okay, now we're going to take a 3x6 cellophane bag. Where's my candy? I got it right here. I love these little mini Ghirardelli chocolates. Uh, they're peppermint bark. This one's dark chocolate, and this one's peppermint. These are Brooke's favorites. I'm just going to put those in there, and then I love this ribbon. Love, love, love. I think I told y'all that last week that I'm kind of, kind of obsessed with it now because it's, it's really easy to tie bows. Or knots. I always call it a bow, but it's technically a knot. And I like to leave the ends a little bit longer until I get it in the box, and then I might trim it. Okay, so that's going to go in there. So I have a piece of white flax ribbon, but you could also use, where did it go? I had it on my uh, paper piercer, and it disappeared. Well, it's gone. You could use linen thread, too, if you want. So whatever you prefer, um, we're going to take the... Merry Christmas, and if you have the 1 8 circle punch, you can certainly use that, but if you don't have it, you can use your take your pick tool or your paper piercer, and then we're just going to thread it through there, and we're just going to go around that knot like that, and then tie it at the top. So it actually might look better using linen thread, but I had the flax ribbon on my desk from uh, the um, Spooktacular Bash class packet, so I just used what I had left over. Okay, let's see how it's how it's going to look now. Cute, right? The ribbon's a little big, so let's trim it a little. Okay, there you have it, and it stands just like that. Cute, right? Okay, so that's the one we made tonight, and this is the one I made this morning. So if you turn it over, you also have the back side done. So if I were making this for someone, I would actually do both sides, because how can you resist? It's so cute. I just didn't put rhinestones on the back. Okay, so where's the Halloween version? So the Halloween version, of course, we used um, the oval dies, the uh, stitched oval, stitched oval. Same box, though. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great night. Bye.